Okay, so in the last presentation on this, remember we were talking about the reductions in our carbon emissions. Where are we going to get the reduction from the 81 we're doing now, million tonnes a year, down to 33 by 2050? Who is actually going to make these cuts? It hasn't been announced yet, nobody knows. But what are the sorts of things? They could, of course, send us all out into the fields and we could start planting forests like crazy. The, the other strategy we could adopt, which is one we've been, we're adopting for this period, is we could actually buy emissions from the third world, from countries that you know, haven't got any economic development and the trees that they've got are still growing. So we could buy, we could just pay them cash. But the problem with that strategy is that that market has collapsed, the international market for carbon credits, because it's full of corruption and um, hard to measure what a genuine credit is and what's actually just a con job. So I suspect in Paris or soon after, the reliance of countries on buying credits from other countries will be um, very much tightened. So I don't think that that's going to be um, an easy avenue for us going forward. The other thing that the government has mentioned, and it actually mentioned it in this 11%, when it said we're only actually committing to 11%, we might not even do that if they change the rules. They change the rules around forestry so that when a tree's cut down, it's not counted as, a, as an emission. It depends what we do with the tree. And we're only committing to 11% if we still have the ability to buy these credits from these other countries, which I've just said is probably what we'll be got rid of as well. So the strategy such as it is, is really all about us being able to continue to game the rules, that they won't change the rules against our favour. Fat chance of that happening. So what the government's really saying with the 11%, well if they're not going to do that, then all bets are off, we won't even commit to 11%. So I've already said we've got wimpish targets, but they're even more wimpish than that. They're not real targets at all, at least the 2030s. So let's move now from the actuality of where New Zealand is, in terms of its commitments here, to what might we do to try and meet these emissions reductions targets that are very serious if the world is going to avoid so-called dangerous climate change. What might we do? There's two basic strands. One is the one I've been talking about, cut emissions. So in that sense, we can move to more renewable energy sources. So away from burning gas or oil, that sort of stuff, or importing you know, fossil fuels to do it in our cars. And move to energy sources like wind, solar, nuclear. Um, and in the case of um, the transport fleet moved to electric. So for example, we could shut down TY Point. We get all that electricity and we could use that to supply our plug-in cars. I mean, there's a big, these are big changes, but we're gonna have to do something like this um, unless you're going out to kill all the cows. We've gotta get these emissions cuts from somewhere. So we can substitute for them, or we can, um, in terms of genera generation, or in terms of um, the type of fuel that our transport fleet uses. So that's one area where we need a strategy, please. There is no strategy yet, remember. The other area is sequestering, capturing carbon. So capturing as it's generated or pulling it out of the atmosphere, which is what the science is telling us we have to do anyway at some stage, is get the amount of carbon that's in the atmosphere down. So we're going to have to pull it out. Um, now, those technologies are in their infancy, but they are developing. And the classic one is converting CO2 to biomass through photosynthesis. So I'm aware, for example, of a, um, a plant that does that in Florida, um, it's a plant owned by a company called Aginol. This is quite a big, big plant, actually. And what it does is it takes the carbon dioxide generated by a power generator, and it's right next to salt water, combines that to, with salt water, causes photosynthesis of algae, and produces more and more biomass. And one of the byproducts of that also is actually ethanol. 
So those sort of technologies of which they are emerging, for sure, um, have the potential to remove carbon dioxide either as soon as it's generated or pull it out of the atmosphere. But we will need to see a massive increase in that. So let me now, so those are the sort of possibilities. So let me now come back to New Zealand strategy, which we said in the cupboard, you know, the cupboard is bare. It's pretty clear from the way that we're planning to reduce our emissions, which is slow path, followed by a faster path later, it's pretty clear that we're relying on these new technologies to come on stream in 2030, 2050, that period, and basically give us mana from heaven. Until then, we're going to continue our gross emissions in New Zealand going up, not down, which is what that previous table said. So that's the reality of climate change. What we need to do to avoid dangerous temperature increase, the targets we've set ourselves, and the strategies that we have yet to think of to actually meet what it amount to pretty wimpish targets anyway. So good luck with that. <laughs>